Oh boy. This is an album that I am kind of terrified to try to talk about. Because as much as I have tried to develop my ability to talk about music, as I've made YouTube videos about music, I feel like there are still groups, still genres, that I just don't feel capable of speaking about proficiently. And this is just one of those albums. That's right, so we're talking about the Appleseed Cast Low Level Owl Volume 1 and 2 on vinyl. Please have mercy on me. My name's Adam, and this is Medium Quality. So I have quite a bit of the Appleseed Cast's discography on the shelf behind me. Uh, but I wanted to pull out this particular album to talk about today, really for a couple of reasons. Not the least of which is that it's this beautiful 20th anniversary repressing of the album on uh, this kind of smoky red and black and caramel colored vinyl. And also because I think this pair of albums from 2001 are probably the Appleseed cast's most ambitious work. But perhaps the main reason that I decided to pull some Appleseed cast off of the shelf to begin with is because a good friend of mine, uh, who I've kind of lost touch with a little bit over the past several months, uh, sent me a message and said that he wanted to see some of their music get some love. And to be honest, I have put this video off for quite a long time because, like I suggested earlier, I'm kind of intimidated by this album. You know, I've used my videos as a space to refine the language that I use to talk about music, and genre conventions are, are often a really important jumping off point for me, which is fine, but the Appleseed casts in general, and the Low Level Owl more specifically, doesn't fit neatly into musical genre categories. You know, I kind of approached this album from the vector of emo music because the other genre descriptors that I can think of to describe this, like post-rock or shoegaze, are genres that I can't speak to authoritatively. I don't even feel conversant in shoegaze. Um, so if you watch a lot of my other videos, you can tell when I feel confident uh, speaking in that mode and when I don't. So again, be kind to my precious heart. Uh, and please feel free to drop into the comments section below and drop some knowledge on me because I really love this album and this band's music, but I don't necessarily understand the broader context of influences and musical ideas that are coming into this album. Uh, and of course, I've really enjoyed learning from you guys in the comments section. But yeah, I guess this is another installment of Why Do I Own This? A series of videos where I take a good hard look at my vinyl record collection and give an account as to why I own these plastic discs with the music on them. If you're vibing with that whole process uh, and you want to engage with me in that conversation, I put a link in the description section below to my Discogs account, which has an up-to-date index of all the vinyl records that I own. And if you're so inclined, you can take a look at that and then come back into the comments section below and let me know what albums I need to answer for, especially if they're ones that I don't tend to talk about often and may feel scared to talk about, like Low Level Owl, a beautiful album that I don't know how to describe. All right, enough of that. Let's talk about Low Level Owl. This is an album that sounds like lush arrangements of reverb-drenched guitar, atmospheric synth and organ pads, barely audible vocal melancholy. And all of that is tethered ever so slightly to a melodic structure by bass and drums that seem to be holding the whole thing down. You know, for me, like I said, it's hard to talk about an album like Low Level Owl because it's more than just that set of instrumental and vocal sounds. This is a challenging album, but it's also a rewarding one. It's an album that demands repeated listens. and as a result, is, is an album that stays with you long after you finish listening to it. It's an album that's stuck with me ever since I first heard it. When I first heard the Appleseed cast in the early 2000s, uh, it was presented to me by people who I, I thought had really interesting taste in music. 
musical tastes that were a little more sophisticated than mine as I was starting to kind of move away from pop punk, uh, really starting to get a little bit tired of some of the heavier bands in my local music scene and wanted to hear something that had some, some not just musical sophistication, but some emotional depth to it as well. And a lot of the bands in my local scene that I that I started to gravitate to more and more were bands that were embracing some more nuanced emotional categories for their music. And when I heard this album and how it moved almost effortlessly from kind of small, delicate sounding music to really big not quite bombastic, but almost like a, a wall of sound that was pushing against you. It really sounded unlike anything I'd ever heard before. And I, I think what that is, is post-rock elements, I think. And again, not a genre I'm super familiar with, but it felt like a musical frontier for me at the time because it was so different than anything I'd heard before. And one of the things I've noticed is that when I don't have a, a really good grasp of, of a genre on the whole, I tend to hold up certain groups or certain albums as kind of signifiers for that kind of music. And this, for me, is, is kind of like my stand-in for an entire genre uh, of post-rock. Um, you know, I, I love bands like Caspian and uh, This Will Destroy You, and other groups that are making that kind of music. Uh, but but this is the one that I keep coming back to, even though it may not be post-rock in the strictest sense. Those elements, those musical ideas, are, are what does it for me. Now, I get that that may be kind of a clumsy way to talk about this album, but it is ultimately the reason that I own it. I, I do enjoy it. Um, if you want to hear me stumble through more discussions about the Appleseed cast's music, I do have pretty much everything that they put out after Low Level Owl. And I would be willing, if asked, to talk about the group more and maybe begin to develop my vocabulary for this kind of music. But until then, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, keep spinning that good stuff. What a time to be alive.